Hello and welcome to the STM32L4 MOOC online training. My name is Andre Barata and I'll guide you through the USART hands-on session. The USART stands for Universal Asynchronous Asynchronous Receiver Transmitter. The USART interface is widely used for serial communication in embedded systems. It is a very flexible serial module that supports asynchronous UART communication, SPI master mode or LIN mode. It can also interface with smart cards and infrared devices. Certain features that are useful when implementing Modbus communication are provided. Applications making use of the USART benefits from the easy and inexpensive connection between devices, which only requires a few pins. In addition, the USART peripheral can be functional in low power modes. In this session we will learn how to configure and generate code for the USART peripheral in STM32 CubeMX. In specific, we will make use of the ST-Link virtual COM port to establish a communication between the MCU and the computer without any external UART to USB converter. When remapping RX to TX signals of the USART2 peripheral to PD5 and PD6 pins, they connect to the ST-Link which allows to transfer data between the onboard MCU and PC. To be able to see the transmitted data, we'll need to use a terminal application. After this introduction, let's open STM32 CubeMX to start configuring our peripherals. Let's start by creating a new project. We'll type our part number STM32L476VG. We will select the desired part and we'll press Start Project. In this example, the USAR2 will be enabled and configured to a synchronous mode. As we intended to communicate through the ST-Link virtual COM port, some remapping is needed. To see the remapping options for a certain signal, press and hold CTRL button and left click on a pin to which the signal is currently assigned. Hold left mouse button and remap both USAR2 signal to pins PD5 and PD6 using drag and drop. That's all that has to be done in the pinout window in this example. There is nothing to be configured in the clock configuration window, yet on the right side of the window you can see that the USAR2 has become enabled and by default it's clocked by the APB1 bus. Moving on to the configuration window, there are many parameters that can be configured in USART. Starting from the common ones such as baud rate, parity or word length, to the advanced ones such as pin swapping, active level of each signal, auto baud rate detection, etc. We are only going to modify word length from 7 bits to 8 bits. Now we will configure DMA channel for transmit direction, so please open DMA setting tab. Press add button, then select user to transmit DMA request. You can see that the 7th channel of DMA1 has been automatically assigned since this one is dedicated for USAR2 transmit requests. The direction is from memory to peripheral and the priority is by default low. As there won't be another DMA request configured, we can leave it as it is. The rest of the settings we will leave it as default, this means DMA mode, memory increment and 8-bit data width for both memory and peripheral. We have just configured everything we need for this example, so now we can save the project and generate our code. Do never forget to use System Workbench for STM32 as our selected IDE. Once the code is generated and the IDE is fully loaded, we can open the main.c file which is in the source folder. As always, the necessary header files are automatically included and the handle structures for the configured peripherals have been created. Moreover, functions for the system clock configuration, USAR2 and DMA initialization have been configured and are called from the main function. Let's have a look on the function that initializes USAR2. Inside this function, the handle structure for the USAR2 is filled with the predefined parameters and at the end, HALURTINIT function is called. This function sets the peripheral registers based on the configuration of the handle structure. All parameters are set based on the configuration done in the STM32 CubeMX. For instance, you can see that the word length is set to 8 bits. 
Now let's have a look into the DMA init function. Inside this function, only DMA1's clock is enabled. The reset, the clock controller and the interrupt for the channel 7 of DMA1 is enabled in NVIC. The priority of this interrupt is also configured there. For the DMA channel configuration, we have to go inside the STM3012 for XX HAL MSP.sys source file, which contains system level initialization for peripherals. The initialization function for each peripheral is called MSP init. Inside this function, the peripheral clock is enabled, pins are configured, and DMA channels or interrupts are also configured if used. Let's start writing our code by creating a buffer that will hold the message to be transmitted. In order to transmit our message, we have to find the proper function. We can start by typing HAL UART and press Ctrl space. We will get a list of possible functions. The function HAL UART transmit DMA will be used. As you can see, the function returns an HAL status value if it has been executed properly, otherwise, it will return HAL error. There are three arguments to be passed to this function. The first one is a pointer to the UART handle structure, the second one is a pointer to the data buffer, and the last one is the number of data transfers. We can copy the name of the handle structure from the top of the main.c file. The name of the data buffer can also be copied. As you probably know, the name of an array is also a pointer to the first element. For the number of transfers, we will use the size of function. We will divide the size of the whole array by the size of the element minus 1 as it doesn't make sense to transfer also the character that indicates the end of a string. We are also going to check the return value and call error handler in case of a failure. On the following step, we will enter the sleep low power mode and let DMA plus wire to the job without CPU interaction. In sleep mode, the clock sources for the core are turned off and thus the overall power consumption is reduced. Thanks to DMA, CPU is not needed to transfer the data. But before that, we need to call the HAL suspend tick function to disable interrupts coming from the SysTick timer. This timer is configured and starts inside the HAL init function, which is called at the beginning of the main function. It is used as time base and configured by default to generate interrupts with 1 millisecond period. If we didn't disable the SysTick interrupt, the SysTick timer would wake up the microcontroller for sleep mode within 1 millisecond. Now we can finally call the function used to enter the sleep mode. As always, the function name starts with HAL, then PWR since related to power control. We can press Ctrl space to look for the proper function. HAL PWR enter sleep mode seems to be a good choice. The function has no return value and it expects two arguments, the regulator mode and sleep entry. The explanation of the meaning of these two arguments is out of the scope of this example. We will pass PWR main regulator on and sleep entry WFI. The only important thing for now is that we are entering sleep mode in which core clock is turned off. We have just finished the coding part and now we can build the project and enter the debug session. To be able to see the transmitted message, we need to install a terminal application and set its baud rate to 150,000 and 200 bits per second, 8 bit size message, one stop bit without parity. We will use Tera terminal application to show the transmitted data. Also, don't forget to open the new connection with ST-Link virtual com port. 
Now let's run the program and let's have a look on the terminal window. As you can see, we have successfully received the messages. The example is now finished. Thank you for your attention.